John, um, I wanted to talk to you about the, your Do Something initiative. Uh, and it's an initiative uh, seeking or wanting people to take more direct action in sustainability. How do we get people to turn around from talking about sustainability issues and sustainability generally and getting them to do things? I think education plays a key role in that because I found when I wrote my book Sustainable Growth that there were thousands of companies that have environmental statements that set out very clearly that they really care for the environment, that they implement sustainability into their businesses. But when you look really closely, you realise that they haven't done that. They haven't implemented sustainability into their day-to-day -day operations because they don't know where to go to for the information. No one's ever taught them how to do it. And when it comes to getting that information, well, where, where is it? And can you rely on it to be true and factual? And this is one of the key problems that universities, education establishments, small to medium-sized enterprises, even larger companies, they all struggle with this. You know, where do you get the information? How do you integrate it into day-to-day -day operations? And that is a, a, a really important factor. And that's why I wrote the book. And, and that's one of the reasons why we set up Do Something. We need to stop talking about sustainability. We need to start implementing it. And one of the main benefits of us doing that is that it actually saves money. And it makes, you know, it makes better use of our resources and, and therefore creates a better environment too. What's the role of the educational system in all of this? And I'm, I'm talking about from a primary, secondary and tertiary level perspective. Well, primary schools can play a really vital role in, in giving kids that proper start. I've got a four-year-old and an eight-year-old and I've tried personally to you know, educate them about sustainability, but the teachers in, at their school are doing a wonderful job and many other schools are doing the same. And, you know, I started Schools Tree Day to try and get you know, the, the kids to get their hands dirty to realise that as they grew up their trees could grow with them and hopefully their environmental knowledge would grow at the same time. So I think primary schools are doing a very good job. Um, I think we could do better uh, you know, with teenagers. There's a lot more that I think that needs to be done. Teen teenagers' interest can drop off a, a little bit. Um, but universities, that's where the real potential is to affect real change because if our universities can become more sustainable in the way that they operate, where they integrate sustainability into day-to-day -day operations, then the students at universities get to experience true sustainability in a working environment. So that way when they go into the workplace, they're not like the current generation of people where They've got the theory, but they haven't got the implementation. Uh, they've experienced implementation, and therefore to them that is the norm that they can then carry on from what they've seen in universities and then take it into the workplace. So how are we faring? What is happening at the tertiary level? I think there are some exciting initiatives happening around the country. We have some very good sustainability managers in the tertiary education sector. However, a lot of them are also very frustrated because they have policies that are put in place sometimes very good environmental sustainability policies, but the implementation of those policies are blocked by middle management, either through lack of awareness and education or plain bloody mindedness. You know, where I've seen uh, examples of middle managers putting in place new buildings where the sustainable option will save a great deal of money, where it makes financial sense. And they don't go ahead with that. They go ahead with the inefficient approach. And I've seen that happen in way too many campuses around Australia. And so I think that when it comes to sustainability in the tertiary education sector, um, the heads of universities and TAFE colleges and other institutions need to be far more hands-on in supporting their sustainability managers and looking at the bottom line, because we've got to start investing and look at that bottom line not just what's it going to cost us immediately, what's going to be the cost over five years, 10 years, 20 years, and, and make a decision that's based on the financial outcome. Because usually with sustainability, if you truly implement sustainable practices, you save money because you're doing more with less. So what can we do uh, individually to promote sustainability, to be sustainable? Uh, well, I think it begins with us saving money because we live so, our lives so inefficiently. We use too much energy, you know, we waste so much food, you know, we're, we're throwing away billions of dollars worth of food every year just in Australia alone. And, but what I find is that when you say to people, become more sustainable, think about the environment, they say, oh, we're really doing as much as we can. But when you take a really close look at, at the average person's lifestyle, 
they're driving around in cars that use way more fuel than they need. And so people can save thousands of dollars a year there. People are now starting to realize the benefits of car share schemes. So to, to get away, you know, with doing away with the second car. Um, if you look at the way we buy and store and use our food, we, we could learn a lot from our grandparents, you know, who didn't throw away food. They would reuse it and, and store it properly. And we just tend to throw away way too much. So right throughout our entire way we live our lives, we could easily uh, improve the efficiency of that by 10, 20, 30 percent and reduce our bills by the same amount. So that's why I started the 10 percent challenge was to try and get people to reduce the, the usage of energy and fuel by about 10 percent. And in fact, many of us can reduce it by 10, 20 or 30 percent. And so I joined forces with uh, Choice uh, and then together with our organization Do Something to show people here are the simple things that you can do in your day-to-day -day life to bring about that change and you will save money at the same time.